Fox News and Republican politicians have somehow convinced a lot of Americans that the Biden administration has actually implemented an open border policy and anyone from any country is allowed to come here and stay as long as they want. But here's the reality. Joe Biden has deported far more immigrants than even Donald Trump. And yes, there have been more border crossings under Biden than there were under Trump. But even so, he's proportionally ramped up deportations to account for that. He even restarted the deportation of Haitian migrants, even though he knows that deporting them could endanger their lives. And really, none of this is surprising to anyone paying attention. America's immigration system is reliably racist and xenophobic, regardless of which party is in power. Both parties use cruelty as a form of deterrence, and really the only difference between both parties is the degree to which they're willing to use cruelty, how cruel they want to get in order to get some kind of a message across. For example, under Trump, he wanted to be very cruel. He instituted a zero-tolerance policy where families were forcibly separated at the border, and that resulted resulted in this image of a toddler being taken away from her parents going viral and sparked national outrage. And to be clear, Biden hasn't stooped to that level at least yet, which is good, but kind of a low bar. But make no mistake about it. Families are still being broken up under Biden's policies. And after he could no longer use Title 42 to deport as many immigrants as he wanted to, he temporarily even considered detaining migrant families to make up for it. But he thankfully backed off following backlash from Democrats. Oh, and he's continuing the construction of Trump's border wall as well. Now, sure, you can argue that the money was already allocated for it and his administration is just following the law. But I mean, he could have fought it, but they chose not to. The point is that Biden is a hawk on immigration. He's far to the right of Ronald Reagan, who granted amnesty to millions of immigrants. Yet we're told that Biden has instituted an open border policy. It's downright comical. But Republicans, they're not going to give him credit for his racist border policies. And trying to appease them with even more hawkish policies is not going to win them over. He's only pissing off his own base by giving in. Wait, it's almost like He's getting played by Republicans. Hmm, maybe there's a lesson here. Now, one would think that Biden would acknowledge the game that Republicans are playing by now and switch it up. But instead, he's doubling down on the racism just in time for the election, which I'm sure his Democratic Party base is going to love. Now, the Washington Post reports Biden has issued new measures Tuesday that will block migrants' access to the U.S. asylum system when illegal border crossings are high, a move aimed at shoring up one of his biggest vulnerabilities to re-election in November. Biden is using executive authorities to impose the broad restrictions as long as illegal entries remain above an average of 2,500 per day, senior administration officials told reporters in advance of the president's planned remarks at the White House Tuesday afternoon. The administration will send migrants deemed ineligible to their home countries or Mexico unless they express a convincing fear of persecution that would qualify them for an exemption under stringent screening procedures, the officials said. Now, this action was taken since Republicans rejected the bipartisan deal that he proposed on immigration after Trump said that they couldn't vote for it. Now, after that happened, Biden should have, at that point, put two and two together and realized, oh, I see what's happening. They don't actually care about immigration and they're only fear-mongering about it because it's an election year. But instead, he is choosing to unilaterally deny asylum to people that are legally allowed to request it under U.S. law, by the way. We're talking about the most vulnerable migrants and Biden is endangering their lives to try to appease people who will never be appeased. But let's look at what he said about asylum seekers before he was elected. Quote, I believe we are a nation that welcomes those fleeing persecution and seeking asylum, not a nation that turns our back on them. Well, here he is turning his back on them. He also said Trump is fighting tooth and nail to deny those fleeing dangerous situations their right to seek asylum in our nation. We should uphold our moral responsibility and enforce our immigration laws with dignity, not turn away those fleeing violence, war and poverty. And now he's doing exactly what he criticized Trump for doing. Now, as you can see here, Jordan Uhl is sharing this response from the Biden wins account on Twitter, which is literally celebrating his racist border executive order because I guess racism is good when your team does it. I mean, it's just fucking pathetic. So he broke his promise. Obviously, he said before he was elected that he was going to treat asylum seekers with dignity. And after he gets elected, he does the opposite, does exactly what he criticized Trump for doing. And predictably, this action that he's taking here is pissing off a lot of people who actually view immigrants as human beings. Believe it or not, some of us Americans do think that immigrants are human beings and not just human, but equal to all of us. 
the same as us, dare I say. But let me show you who he's pissed off. The ACLU, for example, compared his approach to Trump's asylum ban and announced that they are challenging it in court. Good for them. And California Senator Alex Padilla released a strong statement condemning his Trumpian asylum ban and says that Biden, quote, has abandoned our obligations to provide people fleeing persecution, violence, and authoritarianism with an opportunity to seek refuge in the United States. And to be clear, Alex Padilla is one of multiple Democrats condemning this move, and he's not necessarily some firebrand progressive. He's a pretty standard Democrat, but even he's saying, this is going too far. What are we doing? We said we would be better, so why aren't we being better? Now, there's other Democrats. For example, Greg Kasar said this about Biden's racist policy. I have real disagreements and concerns with this executive action because I think it plays into the current Republican talking points. You see, the Republican Party here in Congress tries to cover up its own failures by scapegoating immigrants. It's the oldest trick in the book. And they continue to advocate for closing legal pathways to migration and pointing at chaos at the border. Unfortunately, they've created this political pressure that has the president today responding by restricting asylum, which isn't going to work because it doesn't actually reduce the number of people being pushed out of their homes in Latin America. It doesn't actually create new legal pathways for people to migrate here. And he's right. Cruelty has long been used against migrants to deter them from coming here, but that cruelty doesn't actually change the conditions on the ground that forced them to flee in the first place. And think about it for a second. Do you honestly believe that they want to leave everything behind to start over with nothing in a racist country where they know they're going to be scapegoated and exploited? Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. They're doing that because they don't have a fucking choice. They're coming here because they have to. And not to mention, our policies in Latin America facilitated the destabilization and the destruction of their countries. It's true for many Latin American countries and Haiti. The least that we can do, given that reality, is offer them a new life here. But instead, we're giving them the middle finger. It is so despicable. And it makes me so embarrassed to be an American, knowing that this is how we treat immigrants when we are a nation of immigrants. But Biden, he's clearly pissed off a lot of people. That's the point. People in his own party. But, you know, at least Republicans are going to be happy with this move, right? Well, of course not, because they're still attacking him. Shocking, I know. Trump released a video accusing Biden of, quote, surrendering on the border in response to this. And he claims that countries have emptied out their prisons and insane asylums to send them all here. What a fucking joke. Now, he also argues that Biden is only pretending to do something about the border because of their upcoming debate. But I mean, that's Trump. He's never going to give Biden credit for anything, right? Well, what are other Republicans saying? Well, here's what GOP Senator John Cornyn said on Fox News. This is all an election year. Uh, deathbed conversion by Joe Biden, uh, basically this executive order, which would be, by my count, roughly the 95th executive order he's issued, does nothing to change the ability to hold people as opposed to catch them and release them. And it actually says the first 2,500 that come across the border uh, get in free, will be released into the interior of the country. And as you've seen, Neil, uh, today, we find out their intention is once the front door has caused the room to get too crowded, they're simply going to open the back door and dismiss 350,000 asylum cases that have been pending before the courts. We don't know that for sure, to your point. I love how even the Fox News host was like, OK, sir, rein it in. That's a little bit hyperbolic. Nobody's going to believe that bullshit. But I do agree with you that Biden is bad. I mean, isn't it amazing? He's denying migrants their legal right to seek asylum, and Republicans are still attacking him for it when they said this is what they want him to do. But I mean, I don't know what Joe Biden expected. This is what they were going to say, regardless of what he did or didn't do. Now, there's another clip that I want to play for you from Fox News. And as you're going to see, they're also going to attack Biden for doing what they told him he should do. So why is Biden doing this? Let's bring up three data points that illustrate why he's doing this. Now, remember, again, he floated this for months and months. He's doing it now. Here's why. New York Times, an open-ended Gallup poll released on April 30th found that for the third straight month, most Americans cited immigration as the most important problem facing the United States. Listen to this. That was the longest stretch that the issue had topped the list in the survey's 24-year history. And then they go on to say that Friday, the new polling shows it dipped to number two, but still historic. So for a quarter of a century, this hasn't happened. But now for three months consecutive, immigration is the top. Pete, Reuters, I, I never thought I'd see the day. 56% of voters 
say most or all immigrants in the U.S. legally should be rounded up and deported. Wow. And again, never thought I would see this. Mm. Monmouth, 53 percent now approve of a border wall. This is why Biden's doing this. Yeah, it's all politics. The timing's all politics. Uh, and ultimately, obviously, it's, it's not going to work either. If you look at the nuts and bolts of this policy, it's, what he's trying to avoid is Bill Malusian and Griff Jenkins <laughs> at the border with crowds of illegals behind him through the summer as we're going through conventions and into debates. That's it. That's all this is about. Because if they actually cared about the border, they would have done this at any moment over the course of the last three and a half years. That's simply what this is. It's Kennedy's right. It's incredibly cynical, but people are smart and they, they, they realize what it's about. They won't give him any credit. They won't blame Donald Trump. Uh, it may fade from the headlines and that's all the White House wants. They want it fading from the headlines, but they know who's right on this and who's wrong. And it's certainly not Joe Biden. That video pissed me off for a number of reasons, because when it comes to other public opinion polls showing that a majority of Americans support other policies like Medicare for all, well, to that they say, we can't pay for it, and it's actually not popular, despite what the poll says. But the second a poll shows that a majority of Americans want racism, they're like, come on, let's get on this. The American people want racism, so do racism. This is a democracy, isn't it? Amazing, isn't it? And this poll reflects that their propaganda is working. Because Fox News and Republicans in general, they work Americans into a frenzy by fear-mongering constantly about an open border that Biden has and this invasion, and they pressure Biden to take action. And once they get what they want from him, they still attack him for it and chalk it up to politics. Now, cynical as it may be, is it still not a win for you? Would you not take a victory lap here if you just got what you wanted from a Democratic president? Well, of course not, because they're playing a game. They're playing a game. And Biden is too stupid to realize that they just played him like a fiddle. He walked right into the trap that they set for him. But I mean, we've seen time and time again, Republicans go Democrats into adopting right wing policies. And once the Democrats do what Republicans want, they still get attacked because they then move the goalpost. Democrats will never learn. Remember the caravan of migrants Fox News was screeching about during the 2018 election? Well, Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill was uh, competing in a really, really close race with Republican Josh Hawley in the uh, Missouri Senate race. And here's the solution that she proposed for that. Sure. So this caravan is getting a lot of attention. It's Stop coming. at the border. In other words, fuck them. If they die, they die. I don't care why they're here or whether or not it would endanger their lives if we don't grant them asylum. Send them back because I'm tough on immigrants, just like Americans want me to be. Now, spoiler alert, for those who didn't pay attention to the 2018 election, we no longer have a Senator Claire McCaskill, but we do have a Senator Josh Hawley. Now, ironically, Senator Claire McCaskill is a commentator on MSNBC talking about what Democrats need to do to win elections. So it's going great. So but just to recap, they got her to embrace Trump's racist border policies and shift far enough to the right to alienate her own base to where she was saying, I vote with Donald Trump 70 percent of the time. If you watch that same interview and she still lost. Works like a charm every time and dumbass Democrats fall for it every fucking time. But Democrats need to understand that they will never win over Republicans and xenophobic Americans because they're already voting for real Republicans. Why vote for diet Republicans when you can get the real thing? But I mean, don't take my word for it. Let's look at some results from comparative political science studies, specifically one out of the University of Oxford that validates everything that I'm saying about this shitty failed strategy. The Guardian explains, the analysis shows that center-left parties promising, for example, to be tough on immigration or public spending are unlikely to attract potential voters on the right and risk alienating existing progressive supporters. Quote, voters tend to prefer for the original to the copy, said Tariq Abu Shadi, an associate professor of European politics at the University of Oxford. No shit. And this is a trend that we've seen all throughout the world. Scandinavia, Europe, the United States, Canada, some Latin American countries. Shifting to the right does not help center left candidates win. You're not going to win over the other party's base by adopting that party's policies. They're already voting for that party who's doing the real thing, right? So you're turning off your own base and to make matters worse, you're legitimizing the far right since you're validating their demagogic rhetoric, right? They say immigrants are bad and we need to do something about it. And you say, yes, I agree. This is how slowly but surely fascism creeps up. So what Biden is doing here is helping Trump full stop. 
He's pissing off his own base and validating Trump's xenophobic hysteria. But it's not the only issue where Biden has ceded ground to the right. He's also continuing to supply Israel with weapons that they're using to commit a genocide in Gaza against the wishes of his own base again, by the way. But he's not alone. It's not just the Biden problem. It's a Democratic Party issue in general because Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer just joined Christian Nationalist House Speaker Mike Johnson in inviting that genocidal war criminal, Benjamin Netanyahu, to give an address before Congress. Like Netanyahu should be afraid to set foot on U.S. soil because he should fear getting arrested, but instead they're saying, hey, come and speak before our Congress and lie to our congressional representatives. I mean, it does nothing but piss off the Democratic Party's base more, which wants a ceasefire, which wants Biden to stop sending weapons to Israel, which a majority of them believe that Netanyahu is doing a genocide. And you never want to piss off your base, especially in an election year, but Democrats are like, oh, our base, fuck them. We can win over these moderates. We don't need them. I mean, they're actually foolish enough to believe that they can win over enough moderate Republicans to account for the leftists that they're losing since they keep pissing them off. But they're wrong. It's a losing strategy, and it's also morally outrageous, right? Adopting xenophobic policies isn't just bad because it's electorally a loser for them. It's bad because we should treat immigrants like human beings because they are human beings. They're just like us. They have aspirations. They want to live their lives. They want to be safe. They want security. So why are we treating them like they're less than us, like they're inferior to us? They're the same. But we know why a lot of people treat them that way. It's called racism. Nobody complains about the white immigrants from Europe or Ukraine. It's just the black and brown immigrants from Latin America, from Haiti and elsewhere. It's gross. But Democrats risk losing in November if they don't pull their heads out of their fucking asses. So Biden doing this here is disgusting. It's stupid. And if he doesn't wake up, he's going to lose. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.